Hey, what's up coders? Welcome back. If you've already been following along with this channel, then you've already got a pretty good introduction to Swift and programming with Xcode. If not, before we get started on this, you'll probably want to check out our previous videos on how to get Xcode set up and to get your computer ready to code using Swift. Now, as with all of our videos, these are going to be targeted at real beginners, so there's no need to have a deep understanding of how Swift works, of how Xcode works. We're going to try to keep this as absolutely simple as possible. Now we're covering selection sort and why we're doing sorting algorithms is because sorting algorithms are a really key thing in learning computer science topics. There's loads of algorithms for loads of things but learning different sorting algorithms is sort of this fundamental rite of passage that everybody goes through when they're learning how to implement different algorithms and understanding why some are better than others. So let's go ahead and start. We're gonna pull up the selection sort algorithm page on Wikipedia. Now, like every sorting algorithm, there's going to be a Wikipedia page that more or less just tells you exactly what it is and how it works. In our case, selection sort is a way of taking a list of items and sorting them from lowest to highest, highest to lowest, just putting them in order. Now you can see here from this example, they've got this little GIF here showing what a selection sort actually does uh, at a given time here where it's finding the smallest item and it is sorting it up to the top of the list. Now, if we look over here at this table here where it's actually talking about uh, sorting some numbers, you can see that it starts with a full number, a full list of numbers, and they're not in any particular order. And so what the algorithm does is we're just gonna write some code that goes through this list and finds the smallest item and then moves it to the beginning of the list. And you can see they've sort of split out the half of the list that is and isn't sorted. Uh, after you've done that, you're just going to rinse and repeat. So you just do this over and over and over again until you end up with uh, everything moved out of the unsorted portion of your list into the sorted portion of the list. So it's pretty simple. Go through the list until you find the smallest thing, move that to the front. Go through the list again and find the next smallest thing, move that to the second position. Go through the whole list, find the third, move it to the third position, and so on. Now, if you've been following along, like I said, with the other lessons, you probably are already thinking, oh, this sounds like a loop, and you're right, this is actually going to end up being implemented as a couple loops. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to Xcode, and we're gonna actually show you how to take this algorithm as it's described here in Wikipedia, and we're going to implement it in a Swift playground. So let's jump over there and let's get started. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to launch Xcode really quick. And we're going to start with a brand new Swift playground. For our playground template, we're going to go ahead and pick iOS and just the blank template just to keep things nice and simple. Just pick a place to save. Location doesn't really matter. Okay, and this is our playground. So the very first thing we're going to do here is just get rid of this hello world line of code that it gives us. We don't need this. For those of you that aren't familiar, uh, Swift Playground is just a really simple way to throw some code down on the screen, run it, and see a result. It's for really, I think, really great for experimenting and trying out new things when it comes to building stuff using Swift. So that's what we're gonna use here, is we're gonna use a Swift Playground. Okay, so let's get started here. Now the first thing we want is we want to have a completely random set of numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with an array of integers. Now for those of you that remember, an array is just a list and an integer is a number that doesn't have a decimal place. So a whole number like 0, 1, 5, 1000. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a for loop because what we're going to do is we're going to loop uh, up until, you know, we're going to loop over this set of code however many times we think is necessary and we're going to build up this list of numbers. So in our case, what we're doing is uh, we've got a for in loop, and normally a for in loop is going to go over every item in a set of things. So if you have a, you know, a list of, of, of students' names, it would go over every single name of students. But in this case, we want it to go over a list of numbers. In our case, it's for every number between 0 and 1,000, not including 1,000. And the reason why we have this underscore here is because we actually don't care about this number. We're just using this loop to do the same set of code a thousand times. We could assign this to the variable a or 
you know, whatever else, let's say uh, index of new number, you know, whatever we wanted this variable name to be. And so every time this loop would run, you know, the first time index of new number would be zero and then it would be one and then it would be two. But since we're not even gonna use it, it's really simple. We just uh, replace this name of a variable with an underscore. And that just tells Swift like, hey, you know what? We're not actually interested in what number uh, what number of time around in this loop we've gone through. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say numbers.append and we're going to append it with a random integer. So if you do int, that's a capital int, dot random, uh, it should autocomplete to random in. And what we're gonna do is we're going to supply it with a range. Now this range is the same as with our for loop where we did zero through a thousand. So what we're going to do is just gonna pick a range that we want our random numbers to be in. So maybe we wanna pick like a random number between zero and 10,000. And that will just make it so that we have a good set of completely random numbers. Hopefully no duplicates, but even if we do, not a big deal. All right, so let's run it so you can see the result here. Boom, you can see it runs a thousand times. And if we go ahead and come over here to the inspection, we can see, yep, we've got a thousand random numbers that are between a zero and 10,000. Perfect, that's what we wanted. So now that we have a random set of numbers that's gonna get generated for us every time we run our little project here, our little playground, we want to start implementing the sorting algorithm. Now, the first thing, if you remember in our sorting algorithm was to go through our list and find the smallest item in the list. I'm gonna throw a comment here, indicate, create a list of random ints. It's good practice, indicate to the next person that comes along what our code does. Sort the list, all right. So sorting the list. If you remember, the first thing in the sorting algorithm was to go through the list and find the smallest number. So let's start with that. So we're gonna create a variable called uh, smallest, and it's going to start out as, we're just gonna say the first item in our, in our list of numbers. Now, the first item is probably not the smallest, but it's just a good place to start. You have to assign the variable to something. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and say smallest is the first item in the list. And then what we're gonna do is for every single number in our list, we're gonna look for a smaller number. So how we do that is we say, if the number from our list of numbers is smaller than our smallest number, then it is the new smallest number. And so you can see it runs over our entire list and the end result in our particular case was 6,867 was our smallest number. And we can run it over and over again and you can see we end up with a different smallest number every time and, and we can you know tweak these values. Maybe we don't wanna go all the way up to 10,000. Maybe we want to limit it to 1,000. So now we get reasonable smaller, smallest numbers. So here's the other thing. We don't just want to know what the smallest number is. We also wanna know where the smallest number is. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to numbers.enumerated. What enumerated does is rather than just having the list of numbers, it changes it so that we can get each individual number out of the list of numbers, as well as the index or its position in the list. So if our smallest number was the 35th number in line, then we would get the number itself as well as the index 35. In fact, let's make our, our list smaller so here so it's easier for us to just look at and visually inspect it and make sure that it's it's right. Uh, and then the other thing we're gonna do here is uh, we're gonna save our smallest index because that's the other part of this that we wanna keep track of. So in this case, smallest index starts at zero and we want to uh, make sure that we grab the smallest index once we found the smallest number. So in this case, if the in if the number is smaller than the smallest it is the new smallest but also its index is the new smallest index so we can see it ran 10 times we've got this random list of numbers you can also see our smallest number is 2480 and it is the third index so zero one two three
So now what we have is we have something that goes through our list, it finds the smallest number, and it tells us what index or what position it is in that list, which is awesome, that's a great start. But what we wanna do is we want to keep doing this until we end up having all of our smallest items in a list together. So if we remember from the example on Wikipedia, you can see what it's doing is it is slowly splitting our list into a, a list that is unsorted and a list that is sorted. So we start with our full list, but as we find small items, we move them to the sorted list. And we just keep doing this until we end up with a list that is completely sorted. So there's two ways to do this. You can do it by splitting one list in half, or you can do it with two separate lists, one that is sorted and one that is unsorted. Um, for learning purposes, we're gonna do it with two lists first, but so that you can understand the efficiency or see a more efficient version of this, we're going to also do it with everything in one list. Okay, so let's do that now. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna create a new variable that represents the sorted half of our list. So we're gonna call this sorted numbers, and it's also an array of integers, and it starts out empty. So our first list, which is called numbers, is our random numbers, and our second list is called sorted numbers, and this is where our sorted numbers will go. Now what we wanna do is, once we have found our smallest number and our smallest index, we want to take it out of our random numbers list and put it in our sorted numbers list. So we're going to do sorted numbers .append, our smallest number. And then what we want to do is do numbers dot remove. And we're going to remove from that smallest index. And that's why we kept track of the index so that we could remove it from the list. So let's go ahead and run this so that we can see the result here. We're going to change our list to be five so that it's again easier for us to look at and make sense of. Here's our list of five numbers. You can see that it's sorted 902 which is in index 101 right there perfect. And then the end result is that our, our list of sorted numbers contains the one 902 which is perfect and then it removed 902 from the numbers list. So this is good, we have a sorted list, but it only has one item in it, which is the smallest item. So if you remember, the algorithm is to keep pulling the smallest item out of the unsorted list and putting it into the sorted list. So what we need to do is we need to loop over all of this code until we've completely emptied out the first list. So how we do that is we're going to use another for loop. Uh, same thing as before, we don't actually care about the number that we've looped through. And we're going to go from zero through numbers.count. And make sure you're doing dot dot less than symbol because we don't want to go over the end of our array. This is something that might not seem obvious uh, because arrays are counted from zero, but you know, this is just something in computer science you get used to. It's zero all the way up through, but not including uh, numbers.count. Okay, so now what'll happen is it's going to do this same little operation however many times. So in our case, five times, because there's five items in our list. And after we've been through it, we should end up with, uh, look at this, a list of sorted numbers. And you can look at each individual number. You can see that they are in fact sorted. And then close this back up and you can see that we also had numbers should be empty. So to make this easier to inspect, we're going to just go ahead and print out the result. So we're gonna print our original numbers list, which by the end of our program should be empty, and our sorted list. And you can see an empty list and our sorted list of numbers. So now let's do some extra credit. If you remember, what was described in Wikipedia was illustrated using two lists, but really what it was describing was taking the same list and keeping the first half of the list sorted and the second section of the list unsorted. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take all of this, we're gonna save our place here, we're just gonna comment this out and we're gonna press enter a whole bunch of times and just nudge it completely off the screen. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify our algorithm because now we've already written selection sort, but let's make it so that it's a little bit more efficient. So what that means is we're gonna delete 
our sorted list of numbers because we actually don't need it anymore. That is the point of, of this extra credit is to get rid of that, that extra list. So now that the variable is gone, you can see it's going to complain that uh, all of the places we've used the variable sorted numbers are no longer valid because we've removed the sorted numbers variable. The other thing is we need to get rid of this line about removing numbers from the list because that's not what we're doing anymore. Instead, we're rearranging numbers. Now we're going to leave this here for a second just so we can keep track of it, but we're going to delete all of this because it's no longer valid. Now the other thing that we need is we need to actually keep track of what number we're on in the list. Um, because if we don't keep track of the number we're on, then we don't know where we've actually split. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete that line about our sorted list and we're going to replace our, our remove line with swap. So what this does is rather than taking an item out of the list by removing it and putting it into a different sorted list, Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to swap the place of it. If that makes sense, you can think of it as we're going to find the smallest number and swap it with place number zero on the first loop through. And then the next loop through, we're going to go from zero to one. And so we're going to find the smallest item and we're going to swap it into place number one. And then the next time through, we're going to find the smallest number and swap it into place number two. So you can see if we just option click here, you get I and J are the two parameters here. And those are the two indexes. So that's why we need to keep track of both indexes. So previously we already had smallest index, so we're good there. Uh, and then what we're swapping with is our number index. So zero, one, two, three, until it's counted all the way through our list of numbers. So the next thing is we don't actually want to go through every single item in the numbers list again, because we're going to slowly be swapping things around. So we actually want to start one off of where we started. That makes sense. So in the first pass through, we're going to start at the first number. We're gonna go through the entire list. But the second time through, the first number is already the smallest number, we've already found it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy and paste that little line here. We're gonna change this to second number index. And we're gonna change it so instead of just starting at zero, it starts at whatever uh, the next number after our number index. So for example, if we've got our first number looked at, then we're gonna start at our second number. And if we're already sorted our smallest number to the very front, then we're going to push that off by one and, and start with our second or third number. So then the other thing that we need to do is now that we've gotten rid of our number variable because we're not going through all of them like we were in our for loop, we just need to go ahead and pull number out of our numbers list by doing numbers second number index here. And then we need to keep track of our second number index. So now what we've changed is we've changed that instead of going through our entire list and pulling everything out and putting it into a separate list, we're doing everything in one pass through where we go one by one. We look at the first, then the second, then the third item, and we're moving things. We're finding the smallest number and moving it in place of the first, second, third item. Now, the last thing we need to do before this will compile and run is we need to update this to use number index, and then we need to update this other one here to use number index. Okay, and now that we've got these all updated to use our new indexes, you can see that we can run. And we get the same sorted list, but the difference is we're only using one array. Now, maybe for an array of five items, that's not a big deal, but if we had an array of 10,000 items, we want to avoid having two copies, two arrays that are each 10,000 items big, because, you know, depending on your system, you know, for a modern Mac, this isn't a problem, but maybe you're working like on an embedded chip system that has super limited memory. So this is just slightly more efficient in terms of space, which is one of the things you need to consider when writing an algorithm is how long does it take to do something, but also how much memory does it take to do something? So that's all for this lesson. Thanks for watching. We've given you two examples, one that's a little easier to understand and one that's a little bit more memory efficient on implementing selection sort. I hope this is helpful for you as you're learning various algorithms and progressing along your path in uh, learning and understanding 
uh, how algorithms work in computer science and how to eventually implement your own algorithms to solve whatever problem you might come across. If you found these helpful, please like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps the channel and stick around if you're if you're new to Swift or new to computer science in general. Uh, we got plenty of more tutorials coming this way. All right, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time. See ya.